It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast after the Jets' 37 20 loss uh, to the Cleveland Browns. The Browns now in the playoffs. They can still win the division, but it's not likely. They are in the playoffs for just the second time in over two decades. So it's a big night in Cleveland. Uh, but we're looking at this from the Jet perspective. And again, this game was over in the first quarter. It was over in the first half. There was nothing to play for. It was it was a complete second half of garbage time. And this is the last time I'm going to be talking about Sal in this way until next year. Now, next year, either he's going to win, and that means Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, and Aaron Rodgers is going to carry that staff to a good season, or they're all going to be fired because, let's be honest, they're not going to get more than one more year at this. The uh, Rodgers and no Rodgers. Sal is 17 and 33. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. His, what he said at the podium today, if I was the owner, I would have a hard time letting him coach the team. I mean, when he gets up there and they ask about all the penalties, well, you know what? I, I, I got I to try and figure it out. I got to try and figure it out. I got to try and figure out why you're the most penalized team in the league. And this guy who came in talking about multiple championships – who continues to tell people he has a championship team when they have not come near a 500 season. He is 17 and 33 in his three years. Okay. That is get fired numbers. That is goodbye numbers. And the idea that he can sell somebody or somebody is going to believe when he gets up there and says, well, you know, you saw us play really well in the second half. The game was over in the first half. The NFL is a situational lead. When you have big leads at the half, you don't have to score a whole lot of points. Flacco led an offense that threw for 290-something yards in the first half. He threw for like 13 yards in the second half because he didn't have to throw the ball. He didn't have to do anything. All he had to do is, you know, put the, run the ball into the line and punt and not turn the ball over, as he did in the first half with two minutes left. Otherwise, that game isn't even remotely close. If they don't get that pick for a touchdown that makes the game 27-14, they just aren't even remotely, even within hailing distance of discussing that game. And he's trying to tell you that his team played well and showed a lot in the second half. What are you kidding me? They gave up 367 yards in the first half and 34 points to a Cleveland team that didn't have Amari Cooper. Now, when Amari Cooper's out, a couple of weeks ago, they're playing the Dolphins. Dolphins get 24 points in the first half. They don't have Hill. You know Waddle's going to go crazy. Do they adjust? No. They get 24 points in the first half. Oh, but it was a good second half because the Dolphins didn't score a lot. They didn't have to. The game was over. Over. They knew the Jets weren't going to score any points. They all know they can keep the Jet offense down. They don't have to worry about that. When they're up 17 points, the game's over. They know that. I mean, my God, how can you try and sell this nonsense? Team gave up 367 yards in the first half. The tight end, you knew he was going to be big featured early in the game. Now that Cooper's out, what did he do? He got 100 yards in the first quarter. The Jets don't adjust to anything. Cleveland is really well coached. I would have a hard time not voting that head coach and that staff. Because if you're voting the head coach, you're really voting the staff too. I would have a hard time not voting him coach of the year. He's gone through four quarterbacks. He's gone through countless offensive tackles. He's played without – he lost his great running back a couple of weeks into the season. Chubb was gone. Played without Cooper tonight, and all they do is win. All they do is win. And they understand what they're doing. They get the ball where they need to get it. They make the plays that they have to play. The players understand what they're trying to do. The Jet staff is utterly clueless. And the idea that they are a championship team that is just waiting to plug in Aaron Rodgers, if they go into the postseason or the offseason with that, if they go into the offseason with that idea, with that mindset, you know what? They're in trouble again. They are not nearly a championship team. First of all, they have a terrible coaching staff. Secondly, they have no offensive line. They still need weapons offensively, and they're not a great defense. They're a good defense. 
That defense plays well against the pass most days. It hasn't recently. I think it's gotten very tired, very worn down, very disengaged to what's going on because you've seen them in the last couple of weeks really have bad halves. They had a 24-point half without Hill to the Dolphins. They had a 21-point second half and had a hold on for dear life, actually blew the lead. And if they didn't get a 54-yard field goal, it would have been one of the most embarrassing losses the Jets had in many years. Okay, with what Brissett did tearing them apart in the second half. And they gave 21 points in the second half. Do you realize that in four quarters, the last two quarters of the Washington game and the first two quarters tonight, the Jets gave up 55 points in four quarters? You're going to tell me they have a great defense? 55 points in four quarters. They have had games like this. And listen, The defense is tired. It has had to carry more than its fair share. I understand all that. It's been a long season. You can understand them letting down. But if you try to sell that this is a championship team right now, it just shows how clueless you really are. How can you try to sell that when you've had nothing but losing for three consecutive years? You're the most penalized team in the league. You're the most in, one of the most inept offensive teams in the last two decades in the NFL. And your defense breaks down at times. Where's the championship caliber play? Sure doesn't come from the coaching staff. And this coaching staff is coming back as is for one reason. Because Aaron Rodgers wants everybody back. He's got camp happiness. That's it. He's ready, and that's it. And that's fine, okay? Make Aaron happy. Hopefully he stays on the field for more than four plays next year. Hopefully they do something with that offensive line. If they don't, he won't make it through September next year. That's the bottom line. Because he's old and he's brittle. And he's going to take hits. That's just part of the game. But you want to minimize those. They have some real talent. Hall's a real talent. Wilson's a real talent on offense. No question about it. Those two guys are real talents. They got some terrific players on defense. They have the makings of a wonderful defense. But the idea that they don't do subtle things and take away star players. Take a page from Belichick's book. When you play Miami... And Hill's out, take Waddle away. When you play Cleveland and Amari Cooper is not going to dance the dance, take the tight end away. Take away the player that needs to, that's going to hurt you. Take away the star player and then let them beat you with their other guys. That's what good teams do. That's what teams do that have a clue. But this guy who comes to the podium and says, uh, uh, Coach, what about this? Uh, I got to figure it out. Uh, we got to figure it out. I, I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. We got to figure out how to, how to play the short week. And really, that's it? Just the short weeks? How about playing any week? How about you got to figure out why you've won 17 times and been beaten in lopsided losses 19 times? So you got 33 losses. But you've been walloped 19 times while you have 17 wins. So there have been 19 games where you haven't even been competitive. And tonight was another one. If you think this is a competitive game, then what are you trying to sell somebody? This game was over early. It was 27 to 7. And you have no offense. That's the bottom line. You can't score. And the fact is you got a defensive touchdown to make the game look cosmetic, cosmetically more okay. So it doesn't look awful. And they, they took their foot off the gas in the second half. They didn't have to do anything. You know, they weren't going to go out there in the second half and expose guys because they have playoff games to win. They have big games to play. They don't want somebody getting hurt against the Jet defense. And they know the Jet defense, you know, late in the game, will cheap shot guys and will hit guys. 
They, they're the ones that injured Stroud. They don't want somebody knocking Flacco upside down in the fourth quarter when he's trying to make a play. They want to basically take this game and put it in a cookie jar, which is what they did. They put the game in the deep freeze in the second half, and he tries to tell you that they played well. They didn't have to play. The game was over. Thankfully, the season's over after one game against New England. And I don't care if they win it or lose it. I really don't. Because beating New England this year sure isn't. I understand that it'd be nice for the Jets to beat New England anytime, But beating New England this year sure isn't anything to crow about. And thankfully, the season has mercifully come to a close. But we don't have to talk about it anymore. And we can look to next year and see if they can make the moves that will be smart. And it all starts with building a fortress around this quarterback. Building an offensive line that can do the job. That is the essence of it. Can you compete with this defense most weeks? Absolutely. Do you have to get much smarter on how you run this team? Yes, you can't have 12 men in the huddle. You can't have false starts, and, and, and you can't, on fourth down, send the play in with four seconds on the play clock when you're going to go on fourth down and you don't have time to get the playoff because you didn't send it in because you couldn't deliberate whether you wanted to go or not until you, you basically send the play in with four seconds left. That stuff has got to stop. The, bit, the poor communication has got to stop. Those penalties that are just penalties that show how bad your environment is have got to stop. And, you know, we know they're cocky to a fault, and they want to tell you how they beat up on all these quarterbacks. And you see it, where their their deep backs are mugging after making a play when they're down 20 points and giving up 300 yards passing in the first half. What, are you kidding me? He gave him 300 yards in the first half to Flacco. And you're going to tell me you're going to be posing in the second half? Everything about that team is wrong. Everything. But you know what? Nobody cares about the coach. Nobody cares about how inept hack it is. Nobody cares about anything except the fact that they have the quarterback. And they do. And they got to plug him in and hope he can do his magic. Because if he doesn't, then you know what? The bus out of there, as Aaron retires after not getting it done, is going to include the general manager, the head coach, and everybody on the staff. And you know what? Not going to be easy to get a job after four years of ineptitude. You, a lot of times in this league, if you're fortunate, you can get two shots. Especially if you have success your first time, you know you're going to get a second shot. Salah might have a hard time getting a second shot because his first one is a beaut. He's been here and he's talked to talk for three years and he's not delivered one iota of success, not one. And he has tried to sell you nonsense time after time after time. It's enough. Is the Jet roster... Good in some spots. Yes, there's some very good players on the Jets. There's some very good defensive players on this team. They have some guys who are really good. Williams is really good. Swiss Garden is really good. Mosley's really good. We could go down the line. There's other really good defensive players on that team. There's a good core, but it's not a great defense yet. And there's some really good players. I mean, there's a couple of really good guys there. I'm not counting Rodgers. We know what Rodgers brings. But I'm talking about Hall. I'm talking about uh, Wilson. Those are good players. But until you p can put a offensive line out there that can do the job, and they are so far from that right now, there's nothing else worth talking about. And if you're a Jet fan, from now until the day that Aaron Rodgers takes his first meaningful snap next year, next September, everything you should be thinking about is, where is my offensive line? Who's here? Who can do the job? How many guys can I count on? Where is my flexibility? Where is my versatility? Where is my cohesiveness? 
can I have players there that can do the job? Do I have a core of eight offensive linemen that I can count on? Especially when somebody gets banged up inside a game where I have to juggle a lineup, that kind of thing. When you come up with guys like Deal or Crash or guys like that who were great, vers- they weren't great players, but they were tough and they were versatile. Those are the kind of guys you win with. They all don't have to be stars. Yeah, it's nice to have an all-pro center. It's nice to have an all-pro tackle. That's great to anchor your line. It's nice to have a Trent Williams. You know, it's great to have a Kelsey at center. Yeah. But the bottom line is not every team's going to have that. But you have to have a core that you can trust and you can believe in, especially when you have a quarterback who everything revolves around him. And as long as he is here, taking up New York space, he is it. He is it. Go back to the days of your one championship Jet fans where all it was about was keeping Joe Namath upright. That's how it is now. Keep Aaron Rodgers upright. That is everything for this team. Because without him, there is nothing there. There's no heartbeat. There's no rhyme. There's no intellect. There's nothing there. It has all been put in his hands. He's calling the shots. We all know that. He can deny it. He can do what he We all know what's going on here. That's the way it is. And we all know what he is as a player. Let's be honest. Is he older now? Yes. But was he one of the greatest players who ever played that position? Absolutely. There's no arguing that. He's as good a player in his prime at that position as anybody I've ever seen. There might have been a couple of guys as good. There's nobody better. So does he have a lot left? I'm not sure what's left. I think there's enough left if he can get behind an offensive line that works for him to get the job done. And there's some weapons there. But the bottom line is, Every, every conversation, every thought that you have as a Jet fan now has to be about where my offensive line is. And if that isn't the conversation, then they're not, they don't have their eye on the ball. Because that's what this is all about now. That is where you are glowingly weak. You're also glowingly weak in the coaching department. You get outcoached a lot. And, and that's an overused term by media, by fans, about somebody outcoaching. Somebody, they look at the scoreboard and they say, oh, we outcoached them. Often that's not the case. Sometimes it really isn't the case. But sometimes it is the case. And a lot of times in this season, it has been the case. They're just not up to it. They're not holding up their end. And that has all got to change. So you know what? What he's got to do after he gets the Pat game out of the way, and he being Salah, is you know what? He really has to take his own words, and he's got to figure it out. Because if he doesn't, if the light doesn't go on for him soon, he's going to be in the darkness for a long time. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.